So today we're gonna start our our second uh, painting assignment, uh, and you can see on the on the edge here of the video, you can see the cylinders that we're gonna be working on. Uh, so they, these forms are slightly more complicated, uh, but yeah, I wanted to, wanted for you to have an idea of, of the setup that I have. I have a gray cylinder and. A cardboard one also that is brown and uh, I also have on there a uh, behind the cylinder I have a, a white uh, panel to reflect light into the shadow mass and I wanted to show you briefly what the setup looks like and then I'll just move the camera over to the panel the panel that I have here I'm going to be using this panel that I had here in, the, in my studio, in the, in the studio. Uh, now you still have to do the imprimatura uh, approach, you know, rub it out. This is already dry, you know, so I don't want to let this go to waste, so I'm going to use it anyway. Uh, but the way you start, that I want you to start this painting is uh, how we started the, the paintings of, of boxes of cubes and uh, so I'm I'll go ahead and uh, and just uh, quickly you know sketch this out uh, sketch out the the cylinders um, More than anything, uh, this this demo here, I want to start talking about form and uh, you know turning form. Uh, and what I mean by turning form is making things look uh, three dimensional. Uh, so I, I have two cylinders, you know, uh, this one that I'm that I'm sketching out first which is uh, to, to show you the transition of uh, going from uh, boxes, which have, you know, flat uh, planes, and then moving on to a, to a, to an object that is, uh, that is curved, that does not have planes. But what we learned by painting the boxes and painting the, the flat, uh, you know, the flat planes on those boxes is gonna help us, uh, you know, uh, deal with this, with this form, these cylinders, and help us in, in turning the form, making things look uh, three-dimensional. If this gets a little bit a little bit trickier uh, but this is where, where the fun begins really in painting and making things look three-dimensional uh, so uh, you know quickly I've, I've sketched them out uh, you know, you always want to have separate them into light and shadow, light mass, and then this line here I'm emphasizing the separation of the shadow. This is form shadow, and the shadow that is cast by the object on the surface that is resting, or or when it or the or where this is being cast whether the flat surface or, or a wall. This is called, a, because it's being cast, of course, it's called a cast shadow. And the shadow that is on the object that is on the form is called form shadow. So you wanna to start to, you know, just kind of think about those terms. Uh, 
I'm making it go up here because I, I've got a panel there that is reflecting light into it. Uh, otherwise, it would, of course, just continue. And here on this one, uh, this is the transition between the boxes with the flat planes and uh, the cylinder, which is a curved form. And so what I've done with this, you know, to make this a teaching aid, what I did is I scored a piece of cardboard and then, you know, like every two inches, I think I, I scored it with, a, with an exacto knife. And then I just folded it into a cylinder form. And so I have this, this long planes uh, across this cylindrical form. And this is to show you how light functions, how light falls on, uh, on a curved form. And just to make us, uh, to help us understand a little bit how to approach painting a cylinder. And then after this, we will do a, the next lesson will be on painting a, a sphere, which is the, the more complicated form. Uh, this, of course, it's, uh, we can also use uh, this approach to painting cones. So let me count how many planes I have over there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six. I think my, because I see a little bit of a seventh plane here that turns a little darker. This will help me make a point here that is, that is really important when it comes to to uh, making things look around. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, okay. which is what I have over there. And then this other, you know, just smooth curving form. So again, uh, I'm gonna draw the cast shadow, you know, like just sketch it in. And uh, And so what I have, what I'll proceed here to show you is, uh, and I'm gonna also the cast shadow here and there's you know, some drapery. Uh, a bit of drapery. And so what you what you have here on these long planes is uh, you have a value scale. And we did the value scale, and here this value scale curves. Uh, so I'm gonna start to paint this, and see I've got my grisaille, my values of gray to start working on this painting. So I'm going to put the right value uh, where they should be, because this is just a simple you know value scale of course elongated but it goes from light to dark from light mass to shadow mass and on on this uh, on this cylinder because we've got the clear separation of planes you see where it becomes shadow mass you see the plane that is the boundary between uh, shadow mass and light mass also, you know, uh, shadow shape, you know, the, the shadows here, you can think of those as shadow shapes. Uh, now, uh, this one, because it is, it is uh, a light value of, of brown, uh, I'm gonna start off, I think like the, the brightest value is right here, this plane. 
and I'm starting off here with a with a value this is a, a value 3 you know I'm using this one I don't think there's a, a value 1 on this form uh, now as I as I start to paint this uh, when we have when we have a long object the students uh, in, instinct is to paint it like this long strokes from top to bottom but to make it look more convincing the right thing to do is to paint it to go across the form like what I'm doing here uh, this will help and give it that illusion of, of roundness It's, it's more laborious, but it, it makes uh, the form look more convincing. So all this here, I am... Uh, I'm gonna go back here back into this later and, and to make some other points uh, but you see why I started with a with a value 3 it will get lighter but not much lighter see I mean I'm going in here to smooth it out you know make it a bit more even but overall I painted it with with strokes going across the form so that's value 3 and then uh, but you have what you have with these uh, forms uh, is that they curve you know they curve this way and you know that way so they do they do this they you know I'm trying do this arrow here and so it and it curves and making it like a like a ribbon so you understand that it, you know, it curves this so the light hits it and then from here it darkens this way and it also darkens that way. Usually people think that the lightest value is right at the edge here, but that's not the case. Sometimes that lo it looks to be the case because the background is darker. So this, it makes this value, uh, the value of this area here, of this plane, makes it appear lighter than it actually is. So uh, what I'm gonna do, and on my cylinder, it's slightly, you know, slightly darker. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go in there with a value four. I'm gonna mix it, you know, four with a three. Like, you know, I'm taking four and I already have a little bit of three here. And uh, I'm gonna, you know, fill it in there. Now here it's the, it's a very narrow space. I put a little bit more of the value four because I think it should be a little darker. Here it's uh, challenging to do this, but I'm, so I'm figuring out that I can uh, go at a slight angle here. So I'm using value four. Four with a little bit of a value three and so from this plane that way it's getting darker and also from this way it's getting darker 
So that's that was value like a three and a half. Then the lightest is three. And I believe this one's slightly lighter than that one because it has more light, but not as light as this one. So I'm gonna go with three again, mix it into this that I have here with some four, but mostly value three. And I'm gonna, you know, fill this in here. It's a, a value scale. Essentially a value scale that is very elongated. So I'm going across the form, which will help make this cylinder look more convincing. And one time I was painting a still life and I had put some, uh, it was a painting of, uh, I had some ammunition in the painting. They were 50 caliber rounds, which are very big uh, pieces of ammunition. And I kept painting them and they, they didn't look right. And I kept painting because they were long. And then I painted them several times and I was not happy with the way that they looked. And then I figured out, well, they don't look right because I'm not going across the form. And so once I painted them, you know, this way, like I'm doing, they looked much more convincing as cylinders. <clears throat> so I've got, you know, three and three and a half. I think this can be a four, a pure value four. Okay. I think it needs a little bit of value five to darken it. Again, across the form. And you want to develop this habit of anytime you see a cylinder, go across it, go across the form. You can also, because I'm using a filbert, I have to go back and do this to make it even. Uh, but if you have a flat brush, which I do, but I, I just prefer filbert shapes. Uh, if you have a flat brush, it would make the going across the form easier. But I, I prefer this shape. And look, I'm using a fairly large brush. I mean, this is, I'm doing this bigger than what you guys are gonna have to do. Uh, but yeah, always go in for the, for the bigger brush. So there you have it, right? Just, it's continuing to get darker. Just the value scale, you know, going this way. Uh, now, these values make up in this object, the light mass. Now I'm gonna start going into the shadow mass. And this plane here becomes an important part that will, that will become uh, on this, on this one, because this is smooth. This, this plane, the value that it has here uh, becomes this boundary between light and shadow. And this is where the form turns from light to shadow. So this is the turning. Here you see it clearly with, uh, I'm gonna use a value six for this. 
because the, the objects are they're not very dark in, in color and in value here the turning looks fairly light it'll look you know it'll look lighter then it, over here it, it is quite darker because the turn is a lot sharper you know it's more like this here it's it's more gradual the turning see like I'm doing I'm trying to emphasize the turning with my hand you see it on the video the way this curves it's more like you know this this is more like like it does this uh, So this is value six and the turning you know uh, I think that's that's the safest term to use this to use to use for this uh, you know there's many ways to think about this uh, about this area, this value here. Uh, you know, this is part of the light logic that we're we're getting into here. Uh, you know, it's called light logic. Uh, it goes by others. You know, Charles Curo. That's the Italian term, which means light to dark, which means uh, claro oscuro in, in Spanish. So there you have it there. It's, this is the turning which is which is part of the shadow of the shadow mass so the shadow mass is made here as, as I indi as I've shown you of the turning and the turning is part of uh, is the start of the form shadow and then you have what is shown here, you have the reflected light. The reflected light is, is part of the shadow mass. There's some guys out there on the hall. I can hear them like come in here. You might hear their voices as they walk into the room. Uh, so it, the shadow mass is also made up of the reflected light. And what is reflected light? It is light that bounces off the surface here and bounces back into the into the shadow mass. And that is what we can see at we can see at night. You know, the the light from the sun bounces off the moon, and we can see at night. And I say this because that, that becomes important in understanding uh, value and understanding how form turns. You cannot have, this is a mistake a lot of students make. They see a very bright uh, reflected light and they, they'll use this value in the shadow mass. And that will totally destroy the effect of, of form because that can never happen. And then because they make this as, as bright as this, it pushes this out into the light, which should not happen. It should go into the shadow. And one way that you can think of this is, uh, you know, light functions in in this studio and in that space where I've got the cylinders. It functions the same way that it functions in the universe. Uh, of course, here I don't have the sun. I have a spotlight, uh, and I don't have millions of miles. I have a you know few inches. But it's still it's still the same principle. For example, it's like like uh, let's say right now it's daytime here where, where we live in the United States, and over here it's on the other side of the world. You know, China, uh, you know, Russia. So even though in in that part of the world they can see at night, they they don't have any light that is as bright as what we have now during the day. And that by that same logic. No value that is in the shadow mass can never be as bright as a value that is in the light mass. You just gotta, you have to understand that principle. So 
So this this value here is value six, and then it gets lighter. You know, the reflected light becomes uh, it becomes lighter. And so I'm gonna I'm gonna take six, and I'm gonna take a little bit of five. Again, remember what I said. I do have five here, and I'm gonna have a little bit of five, but it has six on it, so it's not gonna be that value. I might put a little bit more of the value five here. But it already has six, so it will never get that bright, but it definitely has to be lighter. Now, I might come back here and make some adjustments. Uh, I might have to darken this to a values, uh, mix value seven and six, depending, uh, because, uh, you know, values interact with each other. And not until you fill up the whole canvas with with value can you really judge them more properly as you get more experienced painting you can make you know quicker and more and more accurate decisions according to value but it's uh, you might always have to go back and make adjustments you know make make corrections so this is value this is reflected light that is represented by this plane. And I'm I'm thinking I do have to make this darker. So I'm gonna I'm gonna bring my brush and make that turning uh, skin a little bit darker. So that was value six. So I've got value six here. And I'm gonna put a little bit of value seven as well. darken it up and there you go see now I, I like this a little a little better here so uh, you can see the start of the shadow shape this is a better value for this terminator <laughs> a professor that I studied with a you know a great artist that uh, you can you, know, you can look them up. Uh, it was, well, I had two, two really great professors that I right. I gathered most of this information, uh, and you can look them up. Uh, they would call. Oh, well, his, his name's uh, John De Martin. He teaches at the New York Academy. Very nice guy. Very thorough in his. Uh, value exercises in drawing and painting class. Uh, and they would call the turning, they call it the, the terminator. Because that's where the light terminates. I believe that was the reasoning. But I think it sounds too dramatic, you know. I, I think Calling it the turning is more appropriate. So you've got reflected light, and then as the as it keeps going further, uh, this next plane gets darker because it's going away from the reflected light. Uh, so there, I will mix uh, a little bit of this seven and six which i'm almost run out of and some of this here some of that five so i think i'm gonna end up making this like a a two part video here you know this might already be 20 minutes so i just want to finish actually 30 minutes 
then they become hard to upload on, on YouTube. So light mass, shadow mass, shadow mass is made up of the turning, the reflected light, form shadow, and cast shadow. <clears throat> Here the, the cast shadow is uh, fairly dark. So I'm, for that I'm going to have to go into the value 8 and a little bit of the value 9. Uh, you know there's some very dark areas here I want to quickly jot this down and then some value 8 now what I'm painting now is uh, this is This is cast shadow. And then there might be some value seven over here. There's some seven and eight here on this side. And in here, there's a little bit of a value here inside this cylinder. And you've got those planes on the inside of the cylinder. Here, I'm just I'm gonna indicate them quickly. The video needs to, I need to move on to the next to the next cylinder. I just want to, I want to put something there. I have to load up my palette again. I want to fill this in quickly. And these values are here. And these values are here because you've got the opposite thing happening on the inside of this. This is a, a hollow uh, cylinder here. So that's what I'm, this is the inside of it. So my, I made, I think I made my, I made my point here. And now I'm just trying to finish this. Uh, and see like here, like this, this edge, just in regards to painting form, this edge is far away so you can smooth it out, you can, it can be blurry. That makes this sharp edge look like it's closer to us. Uh, and down here, it's almost like a value mix. Four and whatever's left of two and three. bristle brush, a stiff brush.
the folds of the drapery here. Okay, I'm gonna stop it here.